Tucker Carlson had uh, Matt Walsh on, and I, I mentioned this on the show the other day, their obsession with putting uh, cameras in the classrooms of teachers who they think might be teaching critical race theory, it's a bit of a twofer for them because they can also subtly suggest that the teachers are pedophiles or of that sort. It's a dog whistle to the QAnon people. And uh, Matt Walsh seemed to agree on Twitter the other day and Tucker had him on to complete this project where he made some not so subtle allusions to that that idea uh, on Tucker's show. Let's take a listen. No. I mean, look, let's be totally blunt here. Uh, I mean, most teachers are, are great. I'm married to a former teacher. I, I, I'm not against teachers, but some teachers are, are creepy. And we know that because they want to talk to other people's prepubescent kids about sex in pretty detailed ways. You're a creep if you do that. I mean, let's just be totally clear about it. So anyone who'd want to talk to like a third grader about sex practices, don't you think we need to have a camera on that person? Yeah, I forgot that was Tucker that said that, right? <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I guess he just needed Matt Walsh there as a human prop to to allude that you know teachers are creepy. They want to talk to third graders about sex. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's the reality. But if you're trying to cultivate a certain audience that has a certain amount of anxiety about children being outside of the home because maybe they're at daycare and the mothers aren't there with them and, oh, the mother should be staying at home, um, then you're going to make this kind of argument to create that kind of panic and then also activate conservatives on a very granular level where they're so invested in the school board, which also means they're probably invested in state elections and congressional elections, et cetera. You know, you know I mean, uh, the, the, I just want to say that the idea that uh, the teachers are creepy for third grade. I don't know. I don't remember exactly what grade I was in when I learned. I think I, the furthest back I can remember is fifth grade is when we may have started sex education at a very basic level. Same. But the, the idea that, uh, teachers teaching their students about sex education is creepy, but these two uh, adult men discussing putting cameras in the classrooms so they can log in and watch children is not creepy. Excuse me? I mean, excuse me, really? Now yeah. I, have, I, I have two kids and my son is in school. Uh, my daughter is not of school age yet, but my son is in school. And I can tell you that anything that requires even a photograph, like, you know, a school concert, anything that the school does requires the the parents, each of each child in the class to give their explicit permission to allow their child to even be in that photograph. Uh, and if not, then they either don't do it or they have to not put the children in the photographs or even blur certain children out. Um, so the idea that you'd be able to put live stream cameras in a classroom uh, and every parent will just be cool with some other parent who they don't know logging in and spying on their kids is ridiculous. Yeah, no, I just went, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, these guys are participating in a sex panic. That's what this behavior is right now. Like the idea that, like, like you were saying, Matt, I'm not a parent, but I have heard that like, Actually, the problem in America is we are too avoidant about discussing sex in this country with children so that they don't know, for instance, like like you need to broach the topic so kids need to know can say like I shouldn't be touched like that, for instance. Right. Like this is actually a counter creep measure uh, that we are able to like not be like big prudism serves that sort of like keeping those things quiet. Right. Yeah, I mean, no, I just I, well, uh, sorry, on, go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, Everyone yeah. keeps no, no, you, you, can, you can reply first, it's no problem. I just want to really no, no, echo no, what seriously, go ahead. I can get going right after you. Go ahead. Well, you know, I just wanted to echo what everyone is saying, starting with Emma. You know, I think it's you know really astute to point out, you know, I happen to be an expert on the suburban demographic as a you know, a lifetime movie club uh subscriber. Um, I happen to be an expert on that demographic. And I think what you're seeing is that the Tucker Carlson's of the world, the Matt Walsh's of the world, just like with the anti-vaxxer talk, they're trying to prey on this sort of anxiety that the suburban, you know, mom, suburban, older boomer demographic has about the, you know, uh, women out of the workplace, your children being taken care of by strangers, the same kind of anxieties you see in those lifetime movies where like the babysitter turns out to be a, a child trafficker. And, you know, yeah, they're inciting a sex pain 
panic, but there, there have always been sex panics revolving around people's kids going back to the satanic panic, you know, uh, the babysitter panics of the 80s and all those various other things. But they're using it very specifically to try to, you know, drive this wedge between, you know, uh, people like this next generation and new forms of knowledge. I'm not an expert on pedagogy or on like young childhood development, but there are some people who are experts who are designed this curriculum, you know, not as much as they should be, but theoretically they have some expertise in it. And this is being used by Tucker Carlson and Matt Walsh to extricate this next generation from an environment where they're probably learning about race. They're probably mingling with people of different races, different religions, and try to get them back into a bubble where they're going to be more susceptible to the kind of things that Fox News and other Fox News type shows are pushing. You know, you don't want kids learning about race too young or learning that like being gay too young and being exposed to that is okay. Because then by the time they're 20 and 30, they're going to be more and more resistant to like the Prager U Fox News universe. And they're savvy enough to know that. And they're also savvy enough to know that there are these like sexual anxieties that exist in the hearts of these suburban people that make them easy to prey on, but that they're not really aimed at that because they want to teach your kids about sex too. They just want to teach them the wrong stuff about it. Right. Like, what do they think is going on in sex ed classes too? Like, do they think teachers like advocate or like coerce or promote children having sex? Like the idea, like I, I, I remember uh, some parts of my uh, various sex ed class and just feeling like not, not specifics, but I remember learning and feeling like Oh man, I never want to do that because you learn about like the health implications. You learned about like the AIDS epidemic. You learned about STDs. And it's like when you're young, you're like, well, I'm, I'm just going to keep away from that. You know, at least, you know, it's sort of, I don't want to, it gives you a, a whole understanding of what that it all is. So I don't get what they actually think is going on. Like, do they think the teachers are like handing out condoms and saying, go at it, kids? This is, this is fun. Like, what do they think is going on? You know, largely speaking, they're, you know, they're blocking that in most places. They've been, you know, waging a war against sex ed for as long as I have been aware of sex ed as a person. You know, I'm only in my, well, I'm only 30. And so for as long as I've been having sex ed, I've been hearing about like parents and teachers and, you know, church groups waging a war against it. And at the end of the day, it, again, fits into that kind of anti-vaxxer mindset, fits into the kind of like anti-mask mindsets. This is a public health issue. You know, we have strains of STIs that are becoming more and more uh, antiviral, um, antibiotic resistant. You know, we have uh, new methods of, um, new methods of transmission. And this is about controlling and making sure public health knowledge is available so that we can tamp down on public health crises. But they're not concerned about that. They're concerned about like what their audience and how they cultivate us audience that is more and more resistant to any kind of social dynamism. The weirdest thing, though, is they currently do have a whole campaign going on with critical race theory and parents showing up at these school board meetings in, in mass uh, arguing against it. Like they already have one campaign attacking teachers. Why not just roll the cameras in there and be like, we got to make sure teachers aren't teaching uh, critical race theory. Why, that's, why that's bring a the, whole new thing into it? That's I mean, the origin of it. I mean, but then you have to, as like Brandon was saying, you have to include those suburban and then downstream from that QAnon type anxieties, um, it makes it a lot more poignant, especially, I mean, when you mobilize mothers and parents who think that their kids are being indoctrinated or at, are susceptible to, to sexual pred predation or predatory behavior. I mean, that's why he lowered the age. I got sex ed, I think, starting in sixth grade too. Um, that's why he lowered it to third grade because then you fear for your very small children uh being it's not just that they're going to be indoctrinated to hate themselves and hate that they're white they're also going to be molested and that's really what he's trying to say on his top rated news program yeah you know i think you know uh emma hit the nail on the head moral panics like that come and go you know whatever happens to be the anxiety of the time is going to be what's going to be put forth i mean put forth first and foremost and now we're you know we're in the middle of the blm uprisings we're in the middle of like this conversation on police brutality and so the conversation about race is just what on people mind but i think the goals of the far right are the same they're trying to attack this you know in many ways this imagined version of what public school is which is that like this radical bastion where like leftist teachers are indoctrinating your kids and when in reality it's mostly just a place where people are in our society and societal norms are socially reproduced but in their minds those like little little you know 
in sort of that this little little influx of like critical race theory which again is a red herring for the same kind of anxieties that sex ed were a red herring for which is like diversity uh the sexual liberation of women uh the inclusion of minorities into spaces where they otherwise weren't allowed uh but like you know for the most part they're just afraid at these small small gestures towards diversity that are just necessary by nature of demographic shift like in marketing are going to lead to them and their ideals becoming more and more marginalized which it will i mean they're right in that it will but it's important that we speak to that being their true anxiety not any critical race theory or sex ed just the fact that they're afraid that kids are going to have black friends at school they're going to have gay friends at school and they're not going to you know wake up and want to watch tucker carlson after that because they're going to think that like they're people sorry right right i will say i saw uh matt walsh tweet through this after he was on tucker carlson because i guess he realized that everyone was calling the tables were turned and everyone was questioning why he wanted to spy on other people's children in the classroom and he ended up almost completely backtracking but his final thing was like i just need the audio then i don't need the video feed just give me an audio feed of inside the classrooms i mean these guys you know, you know, my Chris Hansen senses are tingling. I'm, I'm sure, you know, everyone's was, but they have like the far right is known for these incredibly weird psychosexual obsessions. They want to go into women's bathrooms and check under all the skirts to make sure that they have the right genitals. And it's, it's all very creepy, but usually they're allowed to in, you know, mainstream circles, pretend it's, that it's coming from a righteous place because sometimes they put their hands on the Bible and then, you know, then they do it. But no, you know, that's neither here nor there. I mean, if we uh, actually put, um, uh, you know, audio recorders into the schools, all I'd find is like, uh, like say a history, AP history class that talks about like Native American dispossession. Is it's gonna like I went to those classes. It, it both sides is those topics, right? Like, it, like you're not gonna find anything super extreme. It's actually gonna give more evidence to people like us and say, hey, we're whitewashing the Confederacy here. Well, I mean, right. like, this is the entire anxiety behind the premise of the movie God's Not Dead 2, which I've seen <laughs> clips of um, just from morbid curiosity where... Um, yeah, sure, the, clips. Yes, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, the evil ACLU, Melissa Joan Hart is a high school teacher who uh, mentions that Martin Luther King was a reverend and doesn't call him doctor, and the ACLU gets her fired from her job and... Uh, and uh, good like, yeah good. Right. I, I can say good good, good. <laughs> so um they're really bizarrely worried about about specific kinds of indoctrination in the classroom and it's been that way for a while folks there's more of what you've just saw where that came from that's if you hit the subscribe and like button thank you really thank you <laughs>